Welcome to Rise With Hope. My name is Alicia Nixon, and this is my autumn series, There's Beauty in Change. Ladies, this series is a series of conversations, authentic conversations, where I'll be speaking with women who've experienced change. And not only that, but the beauty that they've experienced out of the change. This series is every Thursday evening from 8 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Ladies, I know I say this every week, but get comfortable, grab a cup of tea, hot chocolate, whatever it might be, because we're in for a treat this evening. And so I have the honor this evening to have a conversation with Dewan Bergman. Dewan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. And so Dawn, before we even dive into the change that you've experienced, can you tell the audience a little bit about who you are? Mm. Um, I am, wow, I'm a mother of two. Um, I have a son who's 13 and a daughter who's 15. I've been married for almost 19 years. Um, I've been in ministry in some capacity for almost 20 years. Um, yeah, I, I, my profession, I went to school for counseling, but right now I own my own small business. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, thank you for sharing. And so ladies, you got uh, a glimpse of, of a little bit of who Dawn is, and now she's going to be telling us the background story of the change that she'll be sharing with us this evening. So let's hear it, Dawn. What What is the background story of uh, that and my change? Okay. Um, well, I guess we could go back to my formative years. I guess as, um, as a child, I grew up um, in the late 80s, so my formative years was in the late 80s in the suburbs of Mississauga. So for majority of my life growing up, I was either the only Black child or the only family um, in school. Um, yes, I went to a West Indian church, but for the majority of my life, so the rest of the days of the week, I was um, um, immersed in a culture that was unlike <laughs> my Caribbean background. So yeah, so that's um, growing up. Um, that was a lot of um, what I was immersed in. Um, and the reason why I bring that up is because you're talking about beauty out of change. And growing up, um, I didn't see a lot of our beauty, right? So I feel like that's a really important piece to my story that um, growing up, I was always different. I was always the other, um, you know, for us, because we're around the same age growing up. Um, the beauty ideal, even now, the beauty ideal that we see is not um, our, our authentic selves, our natural beauty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was um, growing up seeing images um, that I felt that I need to conform to or um, images that I needed to, um, yeah, conform to in order to be accepted as beauty as beautiful, right? Um, so I think that's a little bit of my background leading into this, um, is that beauty ideal that as Black women that we face on a regular, um, trying to come to grips with that and figuring out um, who we are in the midst of that. Interesting. Mm. And, and ladies, before Dawn starts to talk about the change, you know, how many of you, including myself, have experienced that where yeah, maybe we are the only person that has the same color as us. And, you know, whether it's in school, the workplace, or whatever the case might be. And Dawn has talked about conforming, right? You see images around you, people before you, and you're trying to fit in. You're trying to not be the person who stands out. And so you do things um, to your physical appearance to so that it doesn't draw attention or whatever the case might be, or that people for approval purposes too, right? And so <laughs> it, it's interesting um, that even as adults, we can be doing that, right? And so um, it, it's a thought or it's something to think about. And especially if you have daughters, um, you know, what is it that we are teaching our daughters um, in a society where everybody is different, but we need to let our daughters know that the way that they're made 
they are beautiful in in yes. the way that they are made. Isn't is, isn't that true, Duan? Yes, that is very true. That is very true. Mm-hmm. So, can you tell us then, based on you know what you've been through in terms of growing up, what was the change that you experienced? Okay, so um, when I was younger, um, my mother never permed my hair. This is another piece of the story. My mother didn't perm my hair because I had good hair, right? I had long dark hair um, that was, it was thick to an extent, but it was still easily, easy to manage. Um, so she wouldn't perm my hair. She permed my sister's hair though, but she didn't perm my hair. That's another part of the story. So, you know, the ideal is the silky, straight, long hair. Um, so that's kind of the ideal now that I'm trying to pursue with a hot comb. <laughs> hot combing my hair. And, and that too is damaging my hair, right? Elasticity, taking the elasticity out of my hair on a regular basis, straightening it. But um, for all purposes, yes, I had a full head of hair. Um, and as I reached 18, 19, I'm noticing that my hair is starting to thin. But it's this beauty, this crown, this thing that I was very proud of um, is starting to thin on the sides. And um, at first I thought it was because I was pulling my hair back too much. I used to style my hair a lot. You know, I don't know if you remember, I used to do all kinds of things with my hair. So I'm like, okay, you know, maybe from styling it every Sunday morning and pulling it back and doing all those things, I'm getting traction alopecia or something, right? So I stopped pulling it back. Um, and then I started exploring, you know, different ways of um, beauty. And that's kind of where my, my journey started towards looking at a different picture other than what you know the western eurocentric type of look that we will always see and you know I was trying to achieve as well um, a different look that maybe wasn't so damaging to my hair right um, so yeah so I started doing like you know little curly styles and stuff like that but my sides are still thinning so um I soon it didn't take me long to realize that in my family a lot of the women experience um, thinning not only the crown, which happens to a lot of us as we get older, um, but also alopecia, mm-hmm. genetic alopecia, meaning that, um, you know, your, your body's actually, your immune system or whatever, you're actually attacking <laughs> your cells, your hair follicles, and there's nothing really that you can do about it, right? So I, I quickly realized it didn't, it didn't matter what, I'm going to say, lotion or potion or whatever it is that I would put on my hair mm-hmm. or on my scalp, I'm still gradually losing it um but like i said i tried to start doing things that were less stressful to see if i can minimize the damage mm-hmm. um when i hit 31 mm-hmm. i decided to lock my hair mm-hmm. um which a lot of people were very shocked with because yeah i'm used to having it straight and pulled back and down and so the locket was seemed uh, different or contrary to what I normally would do but the reason why I was doing it is because I figured okay, if I locked my hair then I wouldn't have to brush it back anymore and I wouldn't be like um, damaging it from like just brushing it every day right losing hair from that yeah. so I figured okay, if I lock it and I don't touch it and just leave it then I might not lose it yes um but in 2014 I finally just said yeah there's really nothing I can do um I decided to just shave off the side and one side, I think it's this side. No, it's this side. One side is um, significantly um, more, has less hair than the other side. So I shaved off this side first. And the reason why I did that is because for a number of years, even though people thought I still had full hair, I'd mastered a way of wearing my hair, like down or doing different styles that would hide. Because I've never wore a weave, I never wore wigs, mm-hmm. um, but I knew how to braid my hair. I used to do different styles that you couldn't see. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I used to color it in with pencil and that kind of stuff and use a sponge. And I still do that. I use a sponge and sponge it so you can't tell that it's bald. Yeah. But um, I would do all these tricks, right? And then one day I was like, I was just tired of having to hold my hair down because when I go outside, the wind's going to blow and everyone's going to see the plucked chicken inside. Like it was just, it was becoming too much of an infatuation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I felt like my hair shouldn't take up that much, um, that much real estate in my brain. Like, I'm just like, no, like there's more to life than hair. Yeah. So I just took the plunge and I shaved the one side. Wow. And uh, that, that was a step 
but um, it wasn't as bad as a couple months later when I shaved the other side. Wow. <laughs> so now I have a mohawk. And the hardest thing with that mohawk was that in 2014, not a lot of people were doing it. Like, oh like I was like the one and only in, um, even with Sister Locks, when I did it, uh, I don't remember, I think it would be 2009 when I did it, it wasn't a thing either. People weren't doing it. Now a lot of people are doing it, back then they weren't. So this is another step, right, that I'm taking and everyone's like, what is she doing? Because I never really told people that I was losing my hair. They just see me shaving and they're like, what is she doing? Why is she doing this to her head, right? right? Yeah. So um, yeah, I shaved the other side and ah, I, it, it took me a long, even though I did it to myself, mm-hmm. it took me a long time to come to grips with that and be okay with it because I no longer looked like the beauty norm. I no longer, I was far yeah. from the beauty ideal. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it, trying to um, redefine who I am, show my authentic self and be proud of it. Mm-hmm. You know, walk into a room and not worry about what people think and what people are saying about me. Um, that took a lot. Um, and even it, it, I, would, I would say even, no, not so much now, but even up to last year, maybe like it would, things would still come up in my head, um, about, you know, like what people might think. So to the point where, you know, when you meet someone and then you're I'm like, Oh, I like your hair. And instead of saying, thank you. You're like, Oh, you know, I didn't really do it like this on purpose. You know, I'm losing my, and I'm telling them my whole story. And it's like, they didn't ask me that, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you can tell there's still insecurities. If I can't just say thank you and move on, I have to explain why my hair looks like this. Yeah. So um, if I'm rambling, tell me. because I, I know I'm no, like- it's okay. I wanted to just jump in before you continue. Yeah. So um, ladies, Dwan has mentioned many things. And one of the things I wanted to touch on is the authenticity Um, being authentic and being okay to be authentic, being free to be who we are when we don't fit into, as Dawn was saying, the norm, right? The molds that people would want us to fit in and being okay with that, being comfortable in your own skin. Um, And that she took the plunge, not only to shave the one side, but the, the next side. And how many of you, you know, are going through a change where whatever it is you're realizing that that change when you're okay with it it brings freedom but then there's a process to the freedom and it's not even about like what people would say but dealing with your thoughts dealing with the internal yourself because once you're comfortable as dawn was saying with how you feel yourself then it makes a huge difference and it doesn't matter what people say what they think or if if you think they're looking at you and you wonder what are you looking at you know and stuff like that yeah right? yeah yeah it makes a huge difference because in the beginning when i walk into a room you know you kind of like put your head down and you're like oh the comments would be oh your hair looks nice but i don't think i'd do that oh i don't think that would look because i'm carrying this and I don't realize I'm kind of like this shame. I'm kind of like hunched over. I'm kind of like, you know, like apologetic for who I am and how I look. But now when I walk into a room and I know that I am beautifully and wonderfully made, this is how I am, this is how God made me. And and I look, you know, I, I'm, I feel good about who I am. It makes a huge difference. Because when you walk in, people are like, oh my gosh, that, it's like, not that I'm looking for the attention, don't get me wrong, but it's a different approach when people approach you when they realize that you're confident in who you are and that and when you walk um, in a certain way and you're not hanging your head in shame and you're realizing, yes, that you're beautiful, you're unique and you're beautiful in who you are and you need to be proud of that. So yeah, there's a huge difference when you've worked on that work, that inner work and you're able to accept yourself. Because then now you're projecting, you're teaching other people how to treat you. Yes. If you treat yourself like you're like this, then they're going to treat you like this. But if you are more confident, then they'll come at you as a confident person and encourage you more and help you along your journey. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I found that, yes, there was a difference as I started to change in terms of my thinking and, and yeah, the whole internal piece. That is so awesome. And that is so important. And not just for us as ladies, but ladies, if you have daughters, please, um, to encourage them to not walk with their head down, but to walk with their head up and to be proud of who they are. 
Um, and again, it's about the thoughts. It's we don't see the thoughts, but it it can play in our actions and in our words, right? And so um, it's important that we go over or reflect what are we thinking about ourselves, you know? And um, if there's anything that's negative, then we need to figure out why is it that we are thinking that way in order to deal with it so that we can live a life of freedom, authenticity, and not have to apologize because of the way we look, et cetera. And yeah. so, um, Dawn, thank you for being authentic about that. I was wondering, what are two things you learned about your change? Oh, <laughs> two things that I learned about my change. Um, change change is necessary for growth first of all mm -hmm. so when I was trying to be that person I felt like it limited me yeah. you know I um like I told you I went to school for counseling you know I'm doing that like corporate thing I'm like you know you, you go to school you go to university you go to you know you get married you buy a house you know what I'm saying like yeah. it, like I was like on that track I was in this mold and I was doing things in a certain way that I felt was expected of me yeah but once um my eyes I don't know how to explain it but like my eyes opened I changed okay so one things I tell one of the things I tell people is that when I shake my head I had to change a lot of things about myself to match <laughs> who the new person that I was mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying and and a part of that was not only changing the way I dress but also changing my who I was in my attitude because now I'm this more confident person mm -hmm. and I'm seeing that there's more possibilities for me to yeah. do different things mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. I can pursue that. Um, you know, like this is a confidence that comes. So the change brought growth in ways that I would never have imagined. Mm -hmm. Um, this is like, it's like one of the things is like quitting my job and becoming an entrepreneur and trying out different things and, it all I felt came, I, I know it sounds weird, but that whole process, like whilst I was um, evaluating my inner self and those beliefs that I had about myself and trying to become, trying to change those beliefs, despite what was around me. So that's another thing, it's hard for us as black women, despite, you know, what media says and what society says. And even that, like, we have this um, whole um internalized oppression that we do on ourselves as well so we can't blame everyone else we're also going to think about ourselves too but in spite of all that the change that comes when you work through those things the change in your yeah your personality just projects on how you see yourself as a person and you're willing to take those risks mm -hmm. right because mm -hmm. when you realize okay you know what i shaved my head and i'm still here <laughs> You know, because they're all saying like, your hair is your beauty, your hair is your glory. Well, my husband didn't leave me and he thinks I'm more beautiful now than I was before. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you realize, okay, I can do this. Like, mm -hmm. it's not the end of the world. Okay, what else can I do? Yeah. You know? And you, you that confidence builds up. You know, like, okay, let me try this. Mm -hmm. All right, that was, you know, and even if it doesn't go well, at least you tried it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay, now what else can I try? So I feel like the change helped me to grow mm -hmm. as a person and take more risks. Um, yeah, you said two things, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. Um, I took some, ah, oh yeah, I said I took some notes on some of the things. Um, the change, change open, like same thing, opens the door to a whole new adventure, yeah. right? Like if you're still doing the same thing that you've always been doing, you have like these kind of blinders, like you're in this box, right? But once you allow, you know, a change to happen wherever that is in your life and you are open to more possibilities then you have a different perspective yeah. and you see more like you can see what's around the corner right right so just allowing yourself to step into that change so you can start an adventure right and that's kind of like what life is about like trying different things you don't want to stay in the same little box you know you you want to um experience all that god has for you yeah. and all that um you know it is available to you um to the fullest awesome yeah. so i like that i like in terms of change being necessary for growth mm -hmm. because it is important to grow and mm -hmm. two change provides opportunities it's about taking risks it's about 
um, knowing that there's an adventure that you could be um, accessing, going through, if you say yes to it, realizing that there are opportunities, but it's also, and in addition to that, our attitude towards it, right? As Dawn was saying, if we have the blinders on and are limited and want to remain in the box because we're afraid of change, then it prevents us from seeing what else is out there and how we can change and not only change ourselves but also impact others because i'm sure duan with your change the growth that you've experienced that you've met new people that yeah. you've had various experiences and you've been able to impact others in what way has the the growth that has happened or um, new opportunities or adventures in what what is one way that you've impacted another life or other people's lives that you can think of? That I can think of? Um, so one of the crazy things I did was um, uh, some of you guys have seen me like four years back on social media, just doing a whole lot of fitness stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I like totally embraced that whole fitness aspect and going out and helping other people to, you know, become more healthy and fit so that they could do more and be all that God wants them to be and recognizing that, yeah, we want to focus on our spiritual life. Um, but also our bodies are important because this is this is the vehicle that God's given us in order to accomplish a lot. And if we're limited by this, then we're limited in our calling, right? So that like me stepping out of my comfort, because I was never on social media before I was in my head too. So like, it was just like, I don't know. I just just became more, more as an extrovert, I guess, too. I'm naturally an introvert, which people don't believe, but I'm more, I get my energy from being alone, I find um, going out, cause since I'm in ministry a lot too, I find I have to take a step back. So um, I found that, yeah, like this girl, I just forgot your question, but anyway, that, so that is impact. how you impacted people. Yes. So <laughs> those are, so yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and um, now what I'm doing is with my church, I'm doing a whole preschool, preschool series um, where, okay, so I go to a predominantly white church. So it's really cool that I am the host for the preschool um, online. We have an online program for the preschool. And I just feel like um, a lot more children are seeing people like me. I didn't see people like me when I was little. And now like the four or five year olds are seeing me like mm -hmm. with my shaved head and my locks and my nose ring and <laughs> my dark skin. I'm the one who's teaching them yes. um, in this series. So I go to church and you hear these little children and it's absolutely normal for them to have me as the host, but they're yelling my name, Dewan, Dewan. And I'm just like, wow, like, mm -hmm. I know that may not seem like a big deal to some people, but when you're like us and we only grew up seeing a certain type of person on TV or a certain person leading and we were always in the back or like, you know, yeah. you know, we were like the person bringing up the <laughs> rear and, yeah. you know, being able to show children that, yeah, someone like me can be, you know, Teaching. it's, Teaching. I feel like it's so, it's, it's so empowering. Mm, Yes, because there was a little girl, and yeah, she sent me a note. Just, it's just like, yes, you can do it too. You know what I'm saying? Like, showing them that they can do what they feel they're called to, they can be in whatever circles they feel they are called to. They're beautiful the way they are. They don't have to cover themselves or mask themselves. Yeah. Um, from a young age, you're planting that seed. Um, because I feel like if I had that seed plant from a long, young age, I would be a lot further than I am today. Yeah. So even those, those little messages that um, you're giving children, I feel that we're giving children in regards to diversity and that there's lots of different people and we're all beautiful and you yeah. don't have to look the same. Mm -hmm. It's huge. So awesome. I think I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly did. You, you certainly did. And to encourage the ladies in the role that you are in that yeah you are representing beauty and you have a message whatever that message is for those who are your audience in whatever capacity and um realizing yeah maybe they haven't seen somebody like you so with you in that role makes a big difference and um probably it is encouraging them like if i if she can do it and and she's in this role and i just see her just impacting I can do whatever it is that I want to do. That is awesome. And as you said, Dawn, you're working with the little ones. And so, as you said, planting that seed from now can have them even surpass where we are. Yeah. 
right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So that's awesome. What support was useful to you during this change? Because I'm sure that during this journey, um, you didn't go through it alone, but that maybe there was support that helped you through the journey of alopecia. Hmm. Well, I feel like, I don't know, it seems cliche, but family and friends and like my husband, like just supportive, no matter what I did, um, that was huge. Um, yeah, I think that was huge. I didn't really, I didn't really know too many people at the time that were going through, like now, now that I am doing hair, I'm meeting more people that have alopecia and who are dealing with it. But back when I was starting, I didn't know anybody. So um, I dealt with it more on my own. So I didn't really have like a support group in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was mostly just um, my family and just God, right? Like just reminding myself that, yeah, I am beautifully and wonderfully made and, um, and those things. So, yeah, I would say that's what, it, that's pretty much what it was like in the beginning. Um, and now, like, as I've gotten older, like I've just seen, um, more images of women with bald heads and shaved heads and they're just beautiful. And I'm like, yes, because I know my next the next step is to shave off all of it. Like okay. when it starts to get, like it's starting to get really kind of thin in the front and it's already kind of thin in the middle and I'm not going to hold on to it when it's no longer. So that's my next step. So I'm looking at those beautiful women and you are with the bald heads. Absolutely. I'm coming right there to join you. <laughs> we so yeah, I find, I find that's an encouragement. Um, I feel like lately um, just seeing more women just embracing their beauty. Um, that's huge, huge. And natural beauty at that age, eh, Dwan? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that, you know, you you can't, I think everyone should make it, everyone has their own choice and yeah. can, you know, do what they feel they're comfortable in. But um, for me, um, I was more comfortable not, especially when I was doing um, the fitness and stuff. It's just, yeah, I just felt like I wanted to, no matter what, like, so people ask me, you know, why did I shave my head like this? Well, it's receding this way. So I shaved my head in, yeah. in um, so that it would go with what it was naturally doing already. And then I kind of just colored it and, and sponge in with a, with a sponge. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going with what God's doing yeah. with my head. I'm just following the groove. So the same thing I said, like when it gets far back and God says, yeah, you know, I think I like, think you're pretty or bald. Well, then I'll just shave it off and be bald. So that's just what I'm more comfortable in. And I'm comfortable in being me and doing me. So. Awesome. Well, we are coming to an end. This has been an amazing conversation. Um, Ladies, I hope that you have been encouraged and empowered. You've heard the change, the journey that Dawn has um, been going through is, and is still going through it and how she's embracing the beauty out of it. But before we end on, there's um, one question I want to ask you, because you know what, um, for someone who's experiencing change, but is having a hard time with it, mm-hmm. what is one piece of advice that you can give to her? <sighs> experiencing change and having a hard time. Uh, Try and not be cliche. Um, don't let people rush you because a lot of people might be like, you should, you don't worry about it. Or, you know, like people want to tell you, you know, whatever, just do whatever, just shave your head. Just what it's okay to take time in this process. So for instance, um, I'm just going to use this as an example. Um, so I do sister locks and sometimes as much as I think the woman is beautiful, um, at the beginning, sometimes they don't feel comfortable um, just wearing their locks. They want to cover it and wear a wig and that kind of thing. So it's like, who am I to tell them, take it off, like, just do it. Like, um, unless I feel like I just need a little push. Yes, I'll admit, I'll do that. But like, it's okay, like, you know, like to take your time through this process. Everyone goes through it differently. 
Um, some people are quick and they accept things and other people, you know, they want to pray about it. They want to, um, yeah, like they, they need time to process it. Cause it, it's like, I feel like it's, it's almost like mourning too, you know, like yeah. I had to mourn the loss of an ideal that I was chasing after yeah. the loss of my hair, something that was important to me, you know, um, yeah, I had to more, like I had to put that down. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So whatever you need to do to honor that for yourself, mm-hmm. take that time and do that. Because once you're able to do that, once you're able to lay that at lay that at Jesus' feet, <laughs> there's freedom in that. So don't mm-hmm. rush that piece. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um and and realize that, you know, um, you may have times when you still feel insecure and don't beat yourself up about it, yeah. right? Yeah. Not every day you're going to feel beautiful. There are only days when I get up, I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but recognize, um, but be kind to yourself mm-hmm. and um, um, yeah, recognize that, yeah, you're still beautiful and God still loves you. And um, he wouldn't, he can, he can lead you through it. Mm-hmm. He's not going to take you to something that he's not going to take you. He's not going to lead you to something that he can't take you through. Mm-hmm. So just trust in him. Right. Um, I don't know what that process is going to look like for you. It looks like different for everybody, but trust and believe that things will change. Mm-hmm. Things will change. Um, yeah. And take your time and walk through that. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry. Did you want to, you wanted to add something? No, I'm just, I I see, because I'm talking off the top of my head. I'm just like. No, this is so good. And (laughs) the advice that you've given Mm -hmm. is great. And I mean, very valuable, very empowering. Um, And so ladies, just reflect on the the pieces of advice that Dawn has given in terms of change. And if if you are having a hard time with it, because change is not easy, you know, and depends on the. Um, complexity of the change, the, the level of change, right? So yeah. we are so grateful for this time, Duane. It has been an empowering time. You've been transparent and authentic with your change in, in dealing with alopecia and where you are today and um, how empowering it is that you're empowering other women. You know what I mean? Um, from, as you were saying, one of the changes is to, to lay your ideal down. And it's so hard, you know, to, that, because we have ideals about so many different things in life, but in this uh-huh. case, to lay it down. And now you're able to encourage others and say, yeah, you're beautiful. And you believe that you are yourself. And so just seeing that, yeah, with the change that you've experienced, you are able to empower others inspire others um and i am blessed to have you on rise with hope and so dawn thank you for your time thank you for having me thank you for allowing me to share my story you're welcome and so ladies before we um end i just want to remind you this is rise with hope youtube channel if you haven't subscribed uh, please remember to do so. Just click the button. And uh, next week we will have another uh, empowering woman and her name is Lynn Wade who will be sharing about her change. And so ladies, thanks for joining in this evening and till next time. Bye.